I'm actually, God steered me in a way different direction tonight. Like, this is not really a, the, kind of the normal type of uh, message that I normally preach on. But let me tell you something. It is a very powerful, powerful teaching tonight. I'm glad you guys are here. Now, the title of this message tonight is entitled, The Secret Place. The Secret Place. Um, I remember when I was younger, guys, you know, before I knew Jesus, um, I had this place that I would go to, and it was right behind my house, and the back of my house, you know, it's kind of dirty. Uh, it wasn't all clean and nice and pretty, but it didn't matter because what I went to go do back there wasn't very pretty either. So I would go back there to the back, and I remember I'd find that just, it was just a place. Back then, I didn't know, you know, I didn't call it a secret place or the quiet place or anything like that. But it was just a, a place where I could go and I would just spend time kind of by myself with my thoughts, uh, with a blunt. I mean, just, just being blunt. Okay, just, just I'm saying, okay, I was, that was, this is before Jesus came, all right? So it was, I was back there. And, uh, you know, at that time, what I would call it was, it was like my time of serenity. Like I knew that was the word that I would use back then. For one, because I remember I used to listen to this uh, this this uh, metal band who would, pl they, they had this song called Return to Serenity, and I was like, what is that? And, you know, went to go look it up, found out that it was kind of like a place of peace, right? So I, I would go back there. I was lost. I didn't know nothing about God, so I wasn't trying to find God. I wasn't trying to find that. But it was just a, just a place that I would find myself at, and that was my place. I would go there very often, many times, you know, throughout my, my lifetime as a teenager. So that's what I would do, and and, and now it's, it's very interesting because today as I was meditating on this, and the Lord spoke to me about, about this uh, yesterday or a couple of days ago, and I've just kind of been meditating on it. And it's like God saying, you remember when you used to do that? And I was like, were you there? <laughs> you know? And it's like, God's like, of course I was there. You remember when you used to do that? And I was like, yeah, I, I remember that. He said, well, I got a place similar to that even now. Minus the blunt. Like, so, anyway, so, you know, okay. So, but... The secret place. God has a designated place that he has specifically for you and him. It's not a community place. It's not a place where you gather a bunch of people. It's not a place where you gather your family in. It's, it's a place where it's only just God and you. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a location. It doesn't necessarily have to be a place. Because it's not so much about a location or a place, but rather a state of soul connecting to him. Come on, somebody. Are you with me tonight? Ooh, this is powerful stuff. It's called the secret place. Now, Notice the name, the secret place. Now, in the Bible, it calls it the secret place, but there's other places where it calls it uh, a shelter, where it calls it a covering, or even a dwelling, okay, a dwelling. Now, the Hebrew root word for it is sether, spelled C-E-T-H-E-R. Maybe it might, may be pronounced kether, I'm not sure, but sether. And that word means, it means to hide or conceal. That's the Hebrew word, the word, the secret place. Now, let's just look at that word, the secret place. Well, guess what? <laughs> Not too many people know about the secret place. Just notice the name. Why? It's a secret place. And in this secret place, God will begin to start doing something extraordinary in your life. Now, I'm going to be honest tonight to tell you guys, probably a majority of us in here may not even know or have a secret place. But after tonight, I want to believe and I'm going to encourage you guys that you are going to find that secret place. Okay, because here's the deal. When you learn how to have a secret place, watch this, you begin to tell when others don't have one. You'll be, you'll be able to tell. 
in their conversations, you'll be able to know. You may even want to ask, do you have a secret place? <laughs> because there's, in this secret place, there are some amazing things that happen. I'm going to take you through the word, primarily through the book of Psalms, and I'm going to pull this out and show you about how a person that has a secret place with God, what begins to start happening through that. Are y'all guys ready for that tonight? Come on, amen. Praise God. Psalms 31, verse 20 in the Amplified Translation. We're going to start there. Psalms 31, verse 20 in the Amplified Translation. And it says this, in the secret place of your presence, you hide them from the plots of men. You keep them secretly in your pavilion from the strife of tongues. So what do we find in the secret place? Number one, you find his presence. Now, through the scriptures, you'll find that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Come on. So you'll find his presence. Well, with his presence comes fullness of joy. All right. Number two, what's another thing you find in his presence? According to, chapter, uh, to, to, uh, to the book of Acts, you'll find times of refreshing. So in his presence times of refreshing. Uh, you'll also find rest in his presence, right? And also you'll find freedom. Freedom. Someone say freedom. So number one, what do we find in the secret place according to Psalms 31 20? You find his presence. Somebody say his presence. Somebody say la presencia de Dios. <laughs> you said or didn't get that one. <laughs> All right, so according to the scripture again, here's what we also find. We find protection from plots of men. All right, watch this. In the message translation, it says protection from opposition. In the New Living Translation, it says protection from those who conspire against you. Okay? In the Passion Translation, Protection from accusations. Now, who is the accuser of brethren? Y'all know who that is? The devil. Mainly, the, the biggest, the head, the king of accusations is the devil. But God says in the secret place, you will be protected from accusations. Come on, are you with me? All right. In the CEV translation, it says he, you will get protection from harmful plots. Mm. And in the King James translation, it says protection from pride of men or pride of man. Now think about that. That's what you will find in the secret place. So have you had accusations given to you? Have you had plots against you? Have you ever had somebody conspire against you? Well, what, what's this? And if it has affected you, it could have been a possibility that we didn't go to the secret place. Come on. Okay. Now, from this day forward, you're going to find out what you can do about all these things. What is it? Go to the I think we're getting it tonight just a little bit, right? Amen. All right. So what's, what else do we find? So number one, we find his presence. Number two, his protection from plots of men. But then number three, we also find, according to the scripture, says protection from strife of tongues. Now watch this. In the message translation, it says protection from poisonous gossip. Whew, did you hear that? People talking about you, and they're trying to spread all this junk about you, a bunch of lies, a bunch of all that stuff. Okay, in the secret place, you're protected from that. Poisonous gossip. Whew. In the Passion Translation, protection from brutal insults. How many of you have ever been brutally insulted? Okay, all right. So in the secret place, you get protection from that. In the CEV, it says protection from vicious gossip. 
Wow, come on, somebody. How many of y'all in here at this point now feel, I need to go to the secret place? <laughs> okay? The secret place. All right. Now let's go to Psalms 91 and verse 1. It's awesome that Sister Christy brought this up during the praise and worship. I don't know if she knew, may or may not known that this is what I was going to talk about tonight. And if she didn't, praise God. That's just confirmation. Amen. So here we go. Psalms 91.1 says this in the Amplified Translation. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. Watch this. Whose power no foe can withstand. Mm -mm -mm. That means in that secret place, there is protection against, again, against the foe, the defeated foe. And who's that? The devil. Thank you, Cedro. Amen. He's preaching with me tonight. Amen. Pastor is Cedro in the house. <laughs> now, notice it says here, who dwells in the secret place. Another word for dwells is lives. So say, I live in the secret place. Okay, that means you live in it. Another translation says you sit down there. I, we have a little feed, uh, uh, feedback on the mic back there. We have a little feedback. I don't know if you can hear that. Maybe some of these mics need to be turned off just a little bit. Um, so it says dwells, which means to live or to sit down. It says in that scripture, right? So he who lives, he who sits down, or he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain. Now that word remain means rest or hidden in the strength of God. Watch this. You shall remain stable and fixed. Okay, watch this. How many of you here want to have a stable marriage? You want to have stable kids. You want to have a stable business. You want to have a stable body. You want to have stable mentality. You want to have a stable walk with God. You want to have stability in your life. Come on, somebody. And, and not to mention, you will be fixed. Think about that. Whatever, what, whatever is broke in your life, I'm not talking about the wallet, because most of the, well, the wallet's broke. Okay, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just being broke. And you need to be fixed. Your heart might have been shattered because of past relationships. Your heart might have been shattered because your children don't want to respect you the way you want them to respect you. You're, you're, you. You may need something on the inside of you. Maybe a physical ailment has broken you. You got some kidneys that need to be fixed. You got body parts that need fixing. Come on, kidney. You got all sorts of whatever it may be. Here, God says that in the secret place, you will remain stable and fixed. <laughs> Man, you're going to be stable and you're going to be fixed. Now, in the CEV translation, I like the way it puts it, Sister Polly, because it's kind of like encouraging us to do this. It's not kind of talking about it. It's kind of talking to us to do something. Watch this. Look what it says in the CEV translation. It says, live under the protection of God most high and stay in the shadow of God all-powerful. Here's what it's saying to me. It's saying, live there and stay there. Come on, man. Live there and stay there. How do we do that? Every day. Because I'm telling you, watch this. The secret place is not so much a location. It can be. Don't get me wrong. It can be. It can be a place like the place I used to go to before Jesus. Remember that story I gave y'all? You can go to a place, you can, because you can meet God there, but this is more of an internal thing. This is something that you have on your soul. You can carry the secret place with you. You can carry the secret place to Walmart, because God knows we need the secret place to Walmart, okay? I just say, you can carry the secret place to your family reunions. You can carry the secret place to a, wherever it may be, it doesn't matter where it's at, you can take it with you because it's not just about a location it is about a state of soul are y'all with me so cv is encouraging us to live there to stay there stay right there 
Don't let nothing ever take you away from something that God designated for just him and you. Don't ever allow anybody to take that away from you. Because in this secret place is a place where you'll find his presence, his protection, his stability, his healing. Come on. Fullness of joy, times of refreshing, rest. Did you know Jesus, in between miracles that he did, we all read the miracles that Jesus did, in between miracles, you know where he would go to? The secret place. And in that secret place, guess what happened? He got rejuvenated. So he would be able to, he would be able to be anointed to release miracles and breakthroughs. And then when all that was zapped out of him, he would go to the secret place to get refueled, to get rejuvenated. And then he was able to get back up and go back out and conduct more miracles and more breakthroughs and more healings. And when all that got zapped out, he would say, I've got to get along with the Father. Where was he going? He was going to the secret place and getting refueled rejuvenated after all the brutal things that were they were being spoken about him after all the voices that were being talked about him after all the things that they were saying about Jesus because remember he came to bring change that means nobody in that audience nobody nobody in this world had ever heard anything like the way Jesus came to bring so you, you can just imagine all the opposition that he had but watch this but he was able to put up with all that because of the secret place. See, a lot of us in this room, we have a bunch of challenges. We have a bunch of people talking stuff about us. And, and I'm just going to be honest with you. There is, there is not a single person in this world who can, who can please everybody. You're always going to have people oppose what you have to say. You're always going to have people that don't believe what you got to say. You're always going to have you're always going to have that. And sometimes guys, if you just let those words penetrate into here, it can drain you because you start thinking it. It replays over in your mind over and over and over. And if you don't have a secret place, if you don't have that place where you can go to that's designated for just God and you, if you don't have a secret place, things will get very tough. And you fall into things like depression. You fall into things like anxiety. You fall into things like, like self-hatred. You fall into things like, like self-abusive. You, you, you go there. But what is needed? Tell me, what is needed? Y'all know the title of the message? <laughs> the secret place. The secret place. Well, you need to get rejuvenated because you've done giving all you've had to everybody. You've given all your love. You've given all your fidels. You've given all your, I mean, everything that you have. You've given it all out to all these kids, and they don't appreciate nothing. Your, my, your husband don't appreciate nothing. Your, your community don't appreciate what this church is doing. You're not like nobody appreciates what I do. Okay, uh, you need a timeout, bro. <laughs> You need a timeout. You need to go to the, come on, family. You need to go to the secret place. ¿Qué es eso? <laughs> I hope that this encourages everyone in this room. Because I'm going to be honest with you, Sister Christy, the way I'm able to handle all the craziness that I've ever experienced right here as being a pastor, because I have experienced some things and things have said some things, was due to the fact that I have the secret place. I, 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 I'm like, God, right here, we meet up every single day. There's not a day that goes by that I don't meet with God one-on-one, -on -one, just him and I. I don't have Remy there. I don't have my wife there. I don't have you guys there. I don't have my mom there. I don't have anybody there. It's just God and me. That's designated for you and I. I don't let nobody in this place because this is the... <laughs> Are we getting this tonight? The secret place. Wow. Psalms 32, 7. Remember I told you earlier, another word for secret place is the hiding place. Now watch what it says here, Psalms 32, 7. It says, you are my hiding place and you protect me from trouble. You surround me 
with songs of victory. Uh-oh. That means when you get into this, watch this, I can tell when somebody's been in the secret place because you don't let nothing defeat you. You don't let nothing overcome you because you have been hearing songs of victory when you are in that secret place. Come on, somebody. You hear a different sound. You don't hear all the negativity. You don't hear all that negative news. You don't hear all the hatred. You don't hear all the they're talking about you. You don't hear all that stuff. No, all you hear in the secret place are songs of victory. Praise God. Come on, somebody. That's all. You here in the secret place. <laughs> Watch this. Uh, uh, in one translation where it says you protect me, it says you preserve me in the Amplified. And in the message it says you keep danger far from me in the secret place. Now, if I, listen, if I keep hearing people saying, well, man, the devil's always after me. You need the secret place. Well, all these sicknesses and diseases, you need the, come on, family, secret place. Well, all these thoughts keep coming on to me. I keep replaying them over and over. I keep thinking about that. You need the secret place. Y'all hear that live stream? The secret place. Let's read that in the Passion Translation. Boy, I feel the spirit stirring up right here tonight. The secret place. Not too many people know about it. It's a secret. It's una parte secreta. <laughs> What's this? The Passion Translation. I love this. Lord, you are my secret hiding place. Ooh, do you have that? Can you honestly say, Lord, you are my secret hiding Hiding place. It says, protecting me from these troubles. Do you have troubles right now going on in your life? Then you need a protection from that. You find it where? In the secret place. Surrounding me with songs of gladness. Your joyous shouts of rescue. Ooh, what's this? Release my breakthrough. Whoa, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hold on. I'm needing a breakthrough, Pastor. Okay, go find the secret place. Go to the secret place. Can, I'm, I'm just going to say this, and I'm not trying to be facetious about it, but I'm just going to, so, so far as to say this to you guys, I know this is going to rub against our traditional thoughts, but here's the deal. When you learn to have a secret place, you don't even need nobody to pray for you. You have God himself. See, you're going straight to the source in the secret place. You're not going to the byproduct. I mean, thank God I'm here. I'll pray for you. I don't have a problem with it. That's fine. That's one of my jobs is to pray for you. That's fine. I'll get there. But can I tell you something? If you could just find a secret place, you don't even need me to pray for you because God will heal you himself right there in that secret place. You will. Watch this. Because you get in there and it will release your breakthrough. And praying is awesome. Fasting is awesome. Giving is awesome. That's all good. But without the secret place, you may be missing an ingredient that you actually need in life. Amen? The secret place. Now watch this. Psalms 91, 9 through 16. I'm just going to read this because time is lapsing. Brother Reuben hasn't tapped his watch yet, so I'm good. Psalms 91, 9 through 16. It says, when we live our lives within the shadow of the God Most High, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. When? Sometimes? Now, is God a liar? If he said it in his word, that's what he means? Okay. How many of you understand, are understanding tonight you need a secret place? Because it says here, when you live your lives, remember the word dwell means to live. 
when we live our lives within the shadow of God Most High, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. How then could evil prevail against us or disease infect us? Why would we be answering that question? Why would we be, why would we be asking that? Because he's saying in the secret place, that doesn't exist. Evil, infections, disease, harm, none of that exists in the secret place. This is why I'm, I told y'all guys earlier, when you learn to have a secret place, you begin to start seeing who doesn't have one. I mean, you always hear people sick all the time. I'm always sick. I'm always going through this. The devil's attacking like constantly. It's over and over and over. Here's the answer. You need a secret place. I know I'm going to set somebody free in this house because I'm telling you, it's, we, we, we as believers, I'm not even going to say Christians because Christians have been watered down too much. Believers, kingdom of God believers, we have to operate differently on this earth. We can't be like them. We can't be walking around with our bodies all sick, broke, disgusted. All jacked up, trying to figure life out. Well, we need a secret place. I'm not trying to get on to you guys. I'm just trying to reinforce you guys to let you know what's needed. Are you all with me tonight? Let's keep on going. Watch this. I'm just going to read. It says, watch this. When you find a secret place, here's what happens. God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. Next line. Someone say amen. If you walk into a trap... They'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling. Keep on going. You'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest powers of darkness, trampling every one of them beneath your feet. Ooh, come on, somebody. For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will greatly protect you. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. But watch this. Only in a secret place. Some people say, man, God doesn't hear me. I've been praying and praying and God doesn't hear me. What's the answer, guys? Go to the secret place. It, um, look, man, it's time for us as believers to walk bold as a lion. That doesn't mean you're going to be judging. That doesn't mean you're going to be condemning people. That just means that you're going to walk differently when you're out in the community. When you're out in the open, there is a different aura or aura, whatever they call it, about you. There is actually an energy that flows out of you to the point where when you step next to a person that doesn't have a, a, a secret place, they feel something. Come on. If the lettuce is wilting in the produce section, it will begin to start, come on, restoring. <laughs> Everything is sub submitted to God. Woo, you all with me? I will answer your cry for help every time you pray, and you will find and feel my presence. So will those around you. So I say amen. Come on. So will those around you. Because if you find and feel his presence, so will those. Once you step out of that secret place, boy, others will feel and, 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 and they'll find and feel that presence of God too. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Even in your time of pressure and trouble, you will feel his presence. How many times you ever you've ever said, man, I just don't feel God anymore. I just, okay, well, what do you need? Come on, somebody. You need the secret place. That's what you need. Come on. I don't feel like God's moving. In times of pressure and trouble, he says, you will find and feel my presence only when you have the secret place. I will be your glorious hero and give you a feast. Keep on going. You will be satisfied. Someone say satisfied. satisfied. You will be satisfied with a full life. 
I know we read Psalms 91 like, we know, hey, this is for everybody. But I, I'm sorry I'm going to bust your bubble tonight. It isn't. I mean, it's available to everybody if you choose to find the secret place. Because that's where you're going to find it. Because remember at the beginning in verse 9 it says, if when you hide in that hiding place, in that secret place of the Almighty, then all these things will happen. You will be satisfied with a full life and with all that I do for you, for you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. You have a lot of people. Let me tell you this, because I've, I've talked to them. You have a lot of people who've gotten saved and they've ran out of juice and they no longer enjoy their salvation. I've been flowing in this thing for going on 19 years this year and I still enjoy my salvation. And just the other day, I started, in, in my, I was in my office, and I said, Lord, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for saving me over 19, or a little under, going on 19 years ago. Watch this. Because I have, and I'm not trying to boast or brag on me, I'm not. I want to encourage you guys. It's because I have a secret place. That designated place that God has made specifically for him and I only. 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 Nobody else. Just him and I. You know, the Bible says that he's a jealous God. Okay. That's what he, right there, in the secret place. That's what the jealousy, when you don't spend time with them, he's like, well, I guess you're just spending all your time with everybody else. If that's what you want to do, go ahead. But you're going to find yourself under pressure. You're going to find yourself in trouble. You're going to find yourself distressed, all that good stuff. All I want you to do is spend some time with me because I've got goodness for you. I've got breakthroughs for you. I've got healings for you. I've got everything you need for you, but find me in the secret place. Come on, somebody. Are you with me tonight? Amen? All right, we're done. How many of y'all enjoyed that? How many of y'all got that tonight? Come on. Let's pray out. Let's lift our Say this with me, Father God. As from tonight on forward, I will live and stay in the secret place. You will protect me. Your presence will be there. And gossip will no longer touch my ears. Lord, I will feel and find your presence every time. That I pray you will answer me when I spend time in the secret place. I will do this every day of my life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Come on, can we give God a thunderous praise in the house? Amen. Listen, at this time, I want to give you guys the opportunity to sow to give into the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Yvonne. Amen. All right. Listen, you may stand to your feet at this time. If you have an offering, uh, just again, want to say thank you to each and every one of you. I do want to, uh, I say this repeatedly, but for some of you in here who may not have heard this, you know, a portion of your giving goes out to the nation of Israel. Okay, y'all guys understand that. And I want you to know that there's something special about when we make a decision to be givers to the nation of Israel, to the land of Israel. Not only are we to pray for them, but we're also to, to bless them. And just know that a, a portion of your giving, at the end of the month, it goes right there to the, to the, to the land of, of, of Israel. And amongst a couple of other ministries that we also sow into. I want you to know that that's why I can boldly say to you guys that every seed you sow has a harvest connected to it. Because your seed, the seed that you give unto the Lord, once, once you let it go out of your hand, watch this, once you let that seed go out of your hand, it never leaves your future. It shows up in the form of a harvest. Now watch this. What you do with that harvest now is you keep recycling it. You keep tithing. You keep giving. And the Lord will keep multiplying. That's what he says in 1 Corinthians. He will multiply every seed sown. Just understand that this is good ground that you're sowing into. And the Bible says that you will be able to reap, you'll be able to reap some 30, some 60, some 100. And that is talking about both the word and your seed. Amen. So 
If you don't have cash in hand or checks, we also give by way of text to give, and the information is up there on the board. Uh, we just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for doing your part to make sure this ministry flows and functions in the way it needs to function. And uh, we just want to say thank you for your hearts of generosity in this house. Amen. Let's go ahead and lift up our offering to the Lord tonight. And just an update, Sister Yvonne, nobody came to pick up that what we found the other day. So um, we're sewing it right here tonight. Okay, it's right here. Come on, lift up your offering to the Lord. If you did it on your phone, pick up your phone. Praise God. Here we go. Say this with me. Father God, I thank you that tonight I am not showing up empty-handed. I have a seed, I have obedience, and I have honor in my hand. And tonight I am sowing it into good ground. I thank you, Father, that every seed sown, you will multiply, and it has a harvest attached to it. I now believe and receive in the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody said, amen and amen.